so, how have your dreams been lately? <laughs> My dreams? Uh, uh, I've been having some, like, psychopathic dreams, honestly. Oh, really? I don't know if I want to share them. They're kind of strange. I just oh, that's up to you. I mean, you're an actor, so yeah, you know, it's no. all just inspiration, right? Yeah, yeah. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've, I've had, I've had, I've had dreams before. I've had multiple dreams where there is like townspeople mm. chasing me. One of them that comes to mind was actually, I don't remember how long ago it was. Probably at least ten years ago now, and it was almost like it was on like a movie set, not a movie set, like a like a theater set. There was like a wall painted like a background with hills, and then there was like hills, and they were like purple and blue, and it was like my mom was there and. There's just all these people chasing me, like, back and forth on these hills because I killed somebody and they found out. And yeah. I've had other dreams where it's like, well, fuck, I murdered this person. I'm trying to hide the body. Shit, somebody found it. Yeah. Oh, I had this uh, this dream recently where um, it's weird, you know, how dreams always start, like, in the middle of a scenario. You never, like, oh, yeah. realize yeah. that you got into it. But uh, So, uh, basically, it started with me pulling up outside of this man's house and his garage door was open and I... I just walked over to like, you know, just being a, like a friendly uh, citizen trying to help out, uh, you know, a fellow in need. And uh, he looked like he was working on his car over there uh, a little bit. And uh, I had noticed next to him there was a, a silver briefcase. I didn't pay much attention to it. But we went on, uh, we went about uh, trying to fix his car. And then um, like throughout the course of uh, our uh, working on his vehicle together, uh, the briefcase got knocked over. And uh, inside there was like a large amount of cash. Uh-oh. And then I uh, and then I saw this uh, drill, and then suddenly like an er- a, a strange murderous urge came over me, and I uh, this money could I be mine. Plunged <laughs> the drill into this guy's skull, and like blood like went everywhere, and then like cool. and then I like drug his his uh, body behind his car, and uh, but then I realized that his neighbor uh, was right across the street rowing his lawn, and like I don't think he actually saw the incident, but uh, he saw. Um, suspicious behavior in his neighbor's garage with some guy he'd never seen before. So uh, I slowly tried to uh, make a run for it, and then he came over and he's like, like he, he never found the body, which was kind of strange. But I guess in dreams, like weird shit happens. It doesn't happens. have like, to yeah. add up completely. Yeah. So, um, but he uh, he did find like uh, little spots of blood, like on the uh, cement and stuff. And he was like, "What's this?" And I was just like, "Oh." I don't know, man. He's, he just went. He's went to the store. I mean, uh, he's getting a new part. I'm. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> it's like like the the worst excuses you could come up with. And uh, so eventually, I, I drive away. I like uh, hear cop sirens like whizzing past me as as uh, as like he calls the cops. I guess back back there. And then uh, it fast forwards to the next day. I'm at this field uh, near my house back in. Uh, Pennsylvania. Back in Pennsylvania, yeah, and uh, uh, the cops. Somehow, my car is just in the middle of the field with dents and like blood all over it, and the cops come and arrest me. So oh, I, I, I think that has something to do with it, yeah. yeah, it has something to do with guilt. Guilt, not, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, but I'm not sure what for exactly. But, if you're tuning yeah. in now, um, Bob is just recalling uh, uh, the last few weeks of his life, <laughs> a dream. Hello, how are you, celebrity love? We're doing. We're doing pretty good. I'm doing all right. Yeah. Bob's getting over a cold. Yeah, not not too well, but could be better. Could be. What would you recommend for Bob to feel better? <coughs> Suicide or a cup of tea? Hmm. I heard honey that works. I don't know. Honey that works. Yeah, honey's supposed to be good for your throat. What I usually do actually when I'm sick, uh, I mean, there's a few things. I used to. I started off. If you cut up garlic. Mm. Raw garlic, let it sit for 10 minutes till there's like some element in it that becomes active. You take that, it's like a natural antibiotic to stop it from spreading. And then I would just drink a lot of uh, garlic, garlic. echinacea tea, like nonstop. And I'd get over being sick in four days. And then I started going to, there's this place called Dr. Schultz. In, uh, yeah, this is like the seventh day. So I think I'm like pretty much. Yeah, yeah you're almost, so yeah. yeah, you're in the home home run. It's pretty, in the home stretch. Home stretch, yeah. However whatever lingo humans use <laughs> and then I would whatever get whatever that expression is I would get this stuff from this place called Dr. Schultz where it was just like a, a natural like little cocktail shots where it'd knock it out right away as soon as no, you start feeling sick foot, so, uh. no I yeah, know I know I know yeah it sounds like the same thing it's like he's like milking <laughs> people's feet like toe juice Dr. Schultz and then and then my girlfriend uses this um 
just natural things uh, like oregano oil mixed with like oh. other herbs and stuff. And I think the oregano oil is the main thing that knocks it out. And it's like fucking strong. Hmm. But it, it does the trick. Like I, I was taking, I got over being sick, I think in like a day and a half. One of the times I used uh, this concoction. Actually, I got to start making some up for tour because we're going to be on the road for three weeks. And people yeah. are bound to get uh, sick with erratic sleep schedules, time changes, and uh, show after show. It's pretty awesome, man. Button foot. Slice onion. Put on a sock over to sleep with it. <laughs> oh, really? What was that guy's name again? I've heard sock the stuff before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the name? banjo? That's yeah, uh, yeah. Phil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's new here. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the uh, the music in the background. I don't know if anyone else can hear it, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't tell them. They might tune into his station and leave us. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Uh, it's not. It sucks. We're playing. Yeah, Sorry. it's actually coming from here, if you yeah, hear it. It's anything. really shitty. Um, you will have smelly feet. <laughs> I always heard of the old thing, like, you just, like, sever people's feet and you let them dangle around your neck in your bed, like, athletes that foot means with bad. athletes. What's that? That means you're bad if you sever people's feet and hang them around your neck? No, that's how you get over being sick in the olden days. No, I just thought you said that meant you were a bad person, because I don't know if I agree with that. No, there's nothing wrong with cutting people's feet off. Yeah. As long as, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess it's problematic. As long as the feet problematic. were gangrene to begin with. I mean, yeah, as, as long as they need the it's amputation. Medical, it's medical reasons. Yeah. Doing the feet amputations. For yeah, so... Uh, Bob is a foot actor. He lets um, he's a foot model. Yeah. He lets people photograph his feet for um Calvin Klein socks. Is Cal- my last uh, campaign that I was involved with. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you've moved yeah. out of the the foot fetish industry. No, 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 no. It's no no longer um I no longer put cocks between my toes, only socks. <laughs> no cocks, just socks. What about cocks with socks on them? It's not it's there's, there's I, I haven't said I've completely left the industry yet. That was your assumption. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Have you ever do you know what uh Dilmuffs are? <laughs> Dilmuffs? No, I don't. What is that? They're um they're actually a, a species of alien sock life forms. Okay. And um <laughs> when you have those missing socks in the dryer or in your drawers, yeah. uh they're um, abducting those socks from Earth to use them either as um, sex dolls or they use their fabric to repair themselves on their journey back to their um, planet of yarn. I'm not making this shit up. I'm just telling you what, what I've seen. In I, have, um, I have no reason to not believe you, I guess. <laughs> GG kind of guy. GG Allen. God, this is just like a... Or GQ, GQ kind of guy. Well, G.G. Allen was in GQ, right? GQ, uh... <laughs> I've been told I'm more of a farmhand. I'm bilexic. <laughs> You're more of a farmhand? Yeah, that's what I've been told. I'm more of a farmhand than anything else. Uh, so, um... Bob got... My s- forehead is really sweaty. No, it makes everybody look like that. Like, yeah. mine sometimes makes it appear like I have, like, pimples on my face for some reason. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. I obviously don't have them in real life. Yeah, I know. You have the best complexion I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's beautiful. So, so Bob was sucked into this project, <laughs> one of my experiments called The Horrible Experiments of Dr. Quack. Yes, and um, yes. on a scale of, a of <laughs> 1 to 100, how terrible was this experience? Um, 1 to 100? Uh, or one to ten. One to, one one to, to eleven. Ten. We'll keep it at All right, one to eleven. Okay. Um, no, no. I, I've been far. I've been to far worse. It would no. It was like a, like a horribleness. Like so. Ten, so eleven is the most horrible. Yeah. And zero would be not horrible at all. It would be pleasant. Be pleasant. Okay. Uh, about a, about a four. Okay. About a four. It wasn't. It wasn't far off from pleasant. I mean, it just. Um, I mean, the same problems that you have with any. Uh, production just a lot of sitting around yeah active, yeah you know, that's not you know your fault you're just trying to do it right or whatever so and uh, i mean it was and a lot of that's just my own discomfort with doing something that i'm not used to doing i'm used to doing like more serious stuff and this is something where i'm like kind of over the top like ah, you know just screaming and stuff and it was Cartoon. yeah it's yeah good, it's, good, it's good to be out of your element sometimes yeah no but it was but it was cool yeah <laughs> well i was close wait oh five. Oh yeah, yeah you were close <laughs> 
Psychic almost in the house. Mm. Almost a psychic. Almost a psychic. You've been in the industry, the sock industry? What? Wait, what is it? Psychic, psycho, psychotic. No, I'm psychotic. Uh, what? <laughs> I've been in the industry of insanity, uh, I guess since uh, birth, but I've been, I've been playing music since 2003. And, uh, but before that I did films and then it's kind of like the same thing to me, but, uh, yeah. No, it's all, it's but, all crazy. Yeah, it's all just yeah. expression of, um. This isn't even black, this is green. Yeah, it's true. It's green. And this is one dimensional, like next to us there's some guy playing the guitar. I don't know if you can hear him or not, but yeah. Five to 45, that's 40 years of psychic abilities. Or 40, 40 years of not being able to spell today um yeah i actually shot the last scene of that this morning oh for, real? for dr quack oh, wow. so we're gonna try and get it uh screened and submitted try and get it to festivals by september and uh if no one picks up we're just gonna try and do a self-screening release uh in october since it's a little spooky you know what i wasn't looking forward to that i, I didn't think i would enjoy but i really did about that production playing the robot Oh, operating the robot? Yeah, because it's just like, you know, it's like mask work as an actor, you know? It's like, you know, you, you can just uh, kind of, like, disappear, and, like, I was just like, everything was just really quick movements. It's kind of fun, yeah. Yeah, our, our uh, in, in Death Cat, there's a robot named Demodog1138, yeah. and uh, for, for this production, we had to reprogram him to Demon Dog 1138 mm -hmm. and then uh, we took Bob into this room where we hooked him up to these little sensors where he would move <laughs> and uh, it would go through this analog system uh, computer right, system yeah. to operate very the, high tech. Yeah, the was, robot since yeah. Demo Dog hasn't been programmed to act yet that's what we had to do yeah no, I mean uh, he's got a uh, he now is incorporated with my movements so any uh, quick uh, he's been smacking the especially, toaster especially a lot do you know what's hold, up with that the, hold, uh, uh, the toaster yeah I'd rather not speak about that time. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Pop tarts. I don't like toast. That's suffice to say, I don't like toast. <laughs> I didn't fucking bread. I didn't put you in there telling you could come out as toast. Well, they, God damn it! See, the thing was, they asked uh, me to say every word in the English language when they were programming the uh, robot. And when we came to toast, my uh, my innate self hate for toast just shone through. And uh, I suppose my reaction might have been embedded in the uh, the programming somehow. Uh, the, yeah, it does pick up on emotional response. Yeah, yeah, so. Demon dog. Gone viral? Um, no. <laughs> it's acted as a virus and driven some people <coughs> crazy. Um, no, Death Cat Which is, is just typically been the opposite. Yeah, just as good. Death Cat is considered uh, under the underground band. Like, we're not even underground. Although, since reforming in Los Angeles, mm. for some reason, it's been becoming much more successful than uh, in Detroit or Chicago. Um, but we get, like, requests. We get requests for songs we no longer play. Like, we went on tour last year, and people were like, play Space Food. I'm like, we don't play that anymore. We don't even have a keyboard player anymore. <laughs> or play Glitter Leave. It's like... That's about my ex-girlfriend I haven't seen in two years, and I don't remember the words. Glitter Leave. What's that song about? Glitter Leave? Uh, Glitter Leave is, it, it was a love song. It was about, so I was hanging out with this girl named Courtney and her friend, whose name was Courtney, when I was 19. Okay. And I would drive all the way from uh, Livonia, Michigan to Port Huron, Michigan, which is like a two-hour drive every weekend. Um... And she had a boyfriend. This girl had a boyfriend. So I was like, I probably shouldn't get involved. And like, but, I was, you know, you know that feeling you get when you're like crushing on somebody. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. You, no and matter I, what, you got to give it a shot. Yeah. And I've always been a very like intense uh, lover, I guess. Or like very like I fall hard and fast. And so I was like, oh, I should probably like leave. Like I shouldn't like get in. And then it, it started stemming into something. And then I, I like wrote a song about it, and then we ended up dating for a little while until she broke up with me on Valentine's Day. But it's called Glitter Leaf because like that magical feeling of like being in love to me is something like sparkling, like glitter. And then the leave was like, I should leave. 
and and I remember the musical aspect was in, influenced by uh, Metallica's Death Magnetic album, which had just come out. <laughs> right on. So it's like a thrash yeah, yeah, yeah. love song. No, it's cool. Your stream does not fit into the background. Yeah, uh, we got to stay close, I guess. I don't know what's happening, like, in space, like these clouds. Basically, we just disappear when we get into these clouds because yeah, it's yeah, very I'm, cloudy. I'm, I'm kind of a leaner, I'm sorry. Space. Yeah, my bad. So uh, how, how long would you say you've been a leaner, Bob? Um, my whole life. I don't think it's intentional. I just think I just suddenly start to do that. Maybe it's uh, maybe I have a problem with my spine. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I feel <laughs> you there. Yeah. My back actually never stops cracking. It never stops cracking? Like, every time I move fully, if yeah. I just, like, flex it, it cracks. Ooh. Even if I move my legs. It's not good. Yeah, I mean, it's not, like, painful or anything, so I guess there's a lot of air lodged in there. Hmm. Well, say, wait, you were talking about uh, dreams earlier. Uh, oh, yeah. The, what's the most disturbing dream you've ever had? Um, I don't even know if I want to get into that. Really? I guess, uh, I guess I'll, I've, I mean, I share it anyway, so I'll yeah, share it. Sure. Well, okay, so the freaky thing about this dream. You slow down when you drive. What you talking about, Willis? I see a need for speed with you. Actually, I'm a pretty slow driver these days. I actually catch myself driving under... Un under the limit, although I used to drive pretty psychotic. But, okay, craziest dreams. Um, yeah. I've had a lot of interesting dreams that are really cool, but I guess the, the freakiest one was when I was t 22. And uh, the freaky thing is, I don't know if it was a dream. I mean, I'm sure it was. You Aren't know how they the say you can though, manifest... When you, when you wake up? And you're unsure whether you're still in the dream or not, and like it's almost like that moment of fear, like what have I done? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you get up and you're like, where is that Emperor Palpatine action yeah. figure from 1983? <laughs> oh wait, that was a dream. <laughs> now I tried to, I tried to communicate. I used to, okay. So I used to be really like dark and I had my own cult, uh, if you believe it or not. Oh wow. Me and my friend had a cult called Nothing, and it was centered around like nihilism and. Um, that we can manifest uh, real or you know shape reality, mm. and I had this goal of um, destroying the universe. Okay. And I remember that night we were supposed to speak telepathically, and all this other crazy stuff happened where I was like threatening somebody, like I wanted to like burn down their venue and like all this crazy evil stuff. And I had been like manifesting all this horrible was, shit in my head. Was the use of uh, psychedelics involved? Or? Oh, it was terrible <laughs> karma. Trust me, I know. I've been eradicating it ever since. Uh, no, the, psychedelics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there actually was. There actually, was? no, during this during this this period, I had stopped doing drugs because I had a terrible mushroom trip where, oh, okay. where I peeled into some homicidal path, past life stuff, which I'm actually, mm. my next movie is going to be kind of tapping into that about oh, people's wow. like struggle with uh, their past identities and... um. Uh, and it's actually it's it's very much about like uh, negative karma and how we like fester into these cycles. But anyways, I was having these. Basically, I had manifest in reverse all these horrible ideas that I had thought of reaping on people because I was uh, I just had misanthropy. And uh, my friend who had some like abilities or whatever. What is kind of like in a weird state. We were just in both really weird places, and I thought I was under psychic attack, and there was like dreams of like us basically um, fighting, and it was very tormenting even mm. into my waking life for about two months. But I was having some pretty fucked up weird dreams, Armageddon, like hopeless, like uh, yeah. just like I thought my mind was being hijacked to create hell on earth, and that was kind of actually a turning point one of a few turning points for me when I was like, all right, doing fucked up shit is uh, not such a good idea. Yeah. Because it is kind of like a mirror reflecting back. Didn't, who's calling me? Somebody's calling me. Brandon. Answer it live. Listen. This be magical. This is my Yo, ringtone. I don't like stupid whips. Can't take the fucking drugs. All right, we're going to take a call. We got a caller. 
Brent, oh, I missed the call. I guess I'll call him back. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that was the most fucked up dream I had. And now, okay. Yeah, bad karma. Yeah, no, I've been, I've been, my mission is completely the opposite. It's mm. to end suffering for all. I mean, that was kind of my attempt before, but I didn't understand how things work necessarily. Or I thought I could. The movies, yeah. We both do movies. That's how me and Bob know each other. We uh, we had our own theater company where we were paid minimum wage, and um, then they t threw me out. And uh, uh, if you go, I'm on IMDb, or if you just go to deathcat.us, I have to fix the link to the movies I've done on there, but it'll be on there. Yeah, we did some interesting, uh, interesting. Oh, thanks out, for the good vibes. All right, come on, hook me up. I want TV. Yeah, come on the show. Or are you are you a lost? Do you reside in uh, Southern California? Celebrity love. New Hampshire. Oh. Uh, my friend Lee Venuti is actually a resident of New Hampshire, and Death Cat's actually going to be touring through uh, Cambridge, <laughs> July. Oh, what day? July 19th, we're playing Cambridge. Yeah, at this place called Out of the Blue 2 Art Gallery, which I still have to find bands and artists for. And Celebrity Love really likes you. It's close. Yeah. It's as close as we're going to get to New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> for now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate the positive energy. Yeah. We had some... Uh, I, had a, I, I was having a better. hater on That's here nice. the other... A few days ago until I, I chanted them out, kind of. Mm. Uh, I had somebody coming on that was insulting me and all my guests, calling people uh, calling people niggers and faggots and telling me I had craters in my skin and that I was yeah. terrible. And it was kind of humorous but annoying and just like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, is this, this really how you uh, cope people, with stuff? Some people enjoy that. I don't know what it is. Yeah, there's some kind of uh, like mass... Uh, yeah, I had to stop... I don't know. Paying attention to them, yeah, it's basically. Kind of mass hysteria. It's like based around like everyone thinking that you know putting someone else down is gonna help them. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Ah, eh, whatever. Yeah, we've all maybe been there at some point. Um, but yeah, he laid off like I, I or he or she. I said something. While I was trying to be helpful, telling them like you know every negative influence that they were throwing at us was basically them like harming themselves and then i think they left i'm and rubber came you're glue yeah that's what i told him i'm like look man i'm rubber you're glue whatever bounces off of me is going to stick to you and then he came back and pretended to be nice when i was like eight but you know it's oh, still, yeah. it's, it's true it's it's yeah it's, yeah it's a classic classic truth written by bob's mom <laughs> who then spread it to my middle school where i learned patty it. joe patty joe so do people in pennsylvania where you're from do they say yins yins no we say john you know what John is? John. I know a few Johns. You ever heard of a John? Like, use the John? No, like this John, that John, or those Johns over there. Or like, how about like this? things? Place? Or how about this John we're on right now? John? Are on a John? Yo, you see this John right here? You know what a John is? Like the, like a thing? It's a, it's, a, it's a non-descriptive noun. It can mean anything. So a John is like... Uh, like, how do you spell it? J-O-N? It's J-A-W-N. John. John. And it can be... John. It can literally be any uh, non-descriptive noun. Uh, most commonly in Philadelphia, it's used for uh, drugs. <laughs> but um, yo, but man, let me get some John. <laughs> Basically, but do um, people say that in New Hampshire? Yeah. Oh no, obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've heard my girlfriend was telling me she has relatives in uh, I don't fucking remember where somewhere. Yeah. In PA, and and she was saying people say yins. Did y'all did yins get the turkey or some crap Yins? like that it's like it's like yeah, stuff like that drives me crazy are you like use yeah kind of like, kinda like use you got you yeah, all yeah, it's, yeah but like, instead of y'all uh, yin's getting the yin's getting the john's yet or yeah <laughs> i don't know but yeah but yeah john is just like a non-descriptive noun that can be used for anything it's kind of uh it's yeah it's, it's i don't think i've ever heard it anywhere but philly but yeah, yeah it's, it's john's a fun, it's a fun little idiot john of the uh john connery vernacular i guess yeah yeah, linguistics are, uh, are a funny thing, making sounds to decipher and decode into language. Yeah. Um, um, where was I going with this? 
I don't know. I'm sorry. I put us on a, a John tangent. You Just stay go, blessed go to too, the celebrity John. love. Okay, the next John. <laughs> cool. Um. So uh, what's uh what's uh what's uh what's in the bag? What's what? What's in the bag? What's in the future? What's in the bag? What's in the bag, man? Is that a uh, is that a, like a was it seven ref reference? Seven reference? Yeah, is that a seven reference? Oh, like with the severed no, head. What's in the box? What's in the box? Um, yeah, this goes on here. Yeah, no, it does. It came. It kind of popped off. But. We're just uh, securing our mic stand here. Yeah, it's. It took me a while to take a guitar pick to unscrew the the other one that's in the box. That guy's a dick. <laughs> no, he's cool. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, he's a dick. Yeah. Fuck the police. Did you hear about, I guess this was before I moved to L.A., there was a cop lost his shit and he couldn't take all the crooked cops when so he went on a cop killing spree? Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Was that, wait, was that Dorner or that, that guy who went to the It was like or Eddie something? or Edward something. Maybe it was Eddie Dorner. I don't remember. No, I remember, no, that, I remember that the, the black guy, uh, the big, like, burly black guy, Dorner was his last name. He, like, it might have so been he him. He was pulled up in, like, a cabin in the woods. Oh, and, and they, they burn it down? Yeah, 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 yeah that's that who it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was, uh, yeah, was kind of Eddie odd. Dorner. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. yeah, you don't really hear of good news too often uh, in L.A., so... <laughs> You don't really hear a positive, uh, a positive story like that too often. <laughs> Somebody taking the, <coughs> their version of justice into their hands. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> um. Oh, my girlfriend. I just read half of a text. It said, "I just smelled you slash your hair stuff on my bed. It made me miss you," which is really sweet Aww. and a little weird. Doll. Not weird, but she's she has a very uh, good sense of smell. Her olfactory is like beyond the roof. Like I can't eat. All I can ever smell is snot and nostril hairs. It's, it's probably her period. Yeah, women get that period and they become like hound yeah. dogs. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like amplifies everything else. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but no, no I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, girlfriend. She's very sweet. She's a very nice lady. I'm oh yeah, very, yeah. No, she she yeah, is. She's cool. Terrible actress, darling. What's too loud? I'm gonna fix the okay, go ahead. All right, we're gonna experience some moon. Oh, you mean the? Yeah, the ratio. All right, uh, so we're just gonna. We'll be right back in thirty seconds, or I can just do it here. I mean, I've tried. Who wants to see our arms? This is. <laughs> <laughs> Who our Where arms? did we go in space? Oh, I just. Where did we go? But they enjoy it. Yeah, I think I was trying to just stretch it, and that was not doing it. And then I tried to go to the person. It should be this, right? But I don't see it. Okay, let's click right one. There's so many things on there. Oh, because you have your right one. Okay, so I'll just. Stretch it out. 